suspended on the brink of that voluptuous abyss, a nicety of physiological equipoise comparable to certain techniques in the arts. I kept repeating chance words after her, Barmen, alarmin, my charmin, my carmin, amen, ah, ah, amen, as one talking and laughing in his sleep, while my happy hand crept up her sunny leg as far as the shadow of decency allowed. The day before she had collided with the heavy chest in the hall, and, Look, look, I gasped, look what you've done, what have you done to yourself, oh, look, for there was, I swear, a yellowish-violet bruise on her lovely nymphette thigh which my huge hairy hand massaged and slowly enveloped. And because of her very perfunctory underthings, there seemed to be nothing to prevent my muscular thumb from reaching the hot hollow of her groin, just as you might tickle and caress a giggling child. Just that, and... Oh, it's nothing at all, she cried with a sudden shrill note in her voice and she wiggled and squirmed and threw her head back, and her teeth rested on her glistening underlip as she half turned away, and my moaning mouth, gentlemen of the jury, almost reached her bare neck, while I crushed out against her left buttock the last throb of the longest ecstasy man or monster had ever known. Immediately afterward, as if she had been struggling and now my grip had eased, she rolled off the sofa and jumped to her feet, uh, to her foot, rather, in order to attend to the formidably loud telephone that may have been ringing for ages as far as I was concerned. There she stood and blinked, cheeks aflame, hair awry, her eyes passing over me as lightly as they did over the furniture. And as she listened or spoke to her mother, who was telling her to come to lunch with her at the Chatsfields, neither low nor hum knew yet what busybody Hayes was plotting, she kept tapping the edge of the table with the slipper she held in her hand. Blessed be the Lord, she had noticed nothing. With a handkerchief of multicoloured silk on which her listening eyes rested in passing, I wiped the sweat off my forehead and, immersed in a euphoria of release, rearranged my royal robes. She was still at the telephone, haggling with her mother. Wanted to be fetched by car, my little Carmen. When, singing louder and louder, I swept up the stairs and set a deluge of steaming water roaring into the tub. At this point I may as well give the words of that song hit in full, to the best of my recollection at least. I don't think I ever had it right. Here goes. Oh, my Carmen, my little Carmen, something, something, there's something, nights, and the stars and the cars and the bars and the barmen, and oh, my charmin, our dreadful fights and the something town where so gaily arm in arm we went, and our final row, and the gun I killed you with, oh my Carmen, the gun I'm holding now. Drew his thirty-two automatic, I guess, and put a bullet through his mole's eye. 